Hello everybody and welcome to the return of the Antpod. Yes, if all goes well, the Antpod will be back uploading regularly once again and this time with even more viewer interactions and content, hopefully, if everything goes well. But it's been a year since the last episode and uh, this episode we'll take a little recap, see what's gone on with the hobby, what's gone on with the host of the Antpod. And before we start, I do want to mention that if you're watching this on YouTube, this podcast can also be heard as an audio version. Link will be shown in the description. Today on the panel, we have me, Alex, and Holofer. We have Lynn Ninoturu, all of these, the mother of all ants, all of these funky names. We have the Tetramorium by Karen Atom breeder, Jake, aka Antimatters. And yeah, to start off this episode, let's just do a little quick recap of what's happened in the 12 or so months we've been gone. Lynn, we just had a little introduction, uh, just chatting in before we started recording. And what's uh, what's happened since last we spoke? Because last we spoke, we were following one of your colonies very closely. Yeah, well, let's uh, begin with the worst news. Uh, the Master Cephalodes, they were doing great for a long time. And I actually moved them into a new nest and they were booming in that new nest, which these nests we will talk about later as well. And uh, when I came home one day and I wanted to check on them and sadly the queen was upside down with all her uh, legs up in the air. End of story. Damn. How, how big was she at that point, colony-wise? Uh, I'm not sure. I think someone used an ant counter and they were over 150 workers. Wow. Of her own workers? Yeah, well, all, all because all the the barbarians, I think all of them are gone. If let, let me rewatch this footage, if damn. I do not deafen myself with the audio, <laughs> it looks yeah, all of her uh, barbarians workers are gone at that point, and she had uh, purely uh, cephalodes workers, damn, and there so was a giant major on the way as well. So that's sad. <laughs> oh, that that sucks so much. But 150 workers though, that's like. Well, how, how long ago did they die then? Because it's only 12 months ago since she had like her first generation of workers almost. Ooh, uh, let me see if I can find the dates. I have to scroll back like really <laughs> far, I think. And that's a spider and that's even more ants. I'm keeping videos of all of your ants. Like... Uh, when you see my photo gallery, that's like 90% ants. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> and spiders. Oh, Lynn. Lynn, don't tell me. Have you become a spider keeper as well? Uh, I... Yeah, no. I think you missed something there, didn't you? No, you cannot be on the grenade team. Full inside no. joke. Full inside a joke right there. Ah, here we have it. Uh, the 21st of October, she passed away. All right, so that's, that's like four months, five months ago. Damn, she's been fast growing then. Damn. Yeah, it's they took bad. like they, they were speed running at uh, when I moved them into the new nest. They were like going crazy with the brood and everything. Oh, and I can yeah. report actually that the brood uh, found a new great home because at that time I was taking care of Stein's colony. Uh, uh, what's his name online actually? The end god, the end merchant, Stein. And uh, he had a Cephalotus queen with him. And I was able to give her the brood of the. She had a few workers of her own. But I was able to give all of the the brood that was left over to the, yeah, to the Queen of Stein. So, good. I guess that's the the good story about it. Yeah, at least it wasn't all wasted then. Yeah, exactly. So overall, what what's happened since last week, Falkland? Are you still keeping ants? Apparently, you're also keeping spiders now. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, you can. I'm surprised that you missed that story because uh, during ant. Well, maybe we should actually add that to the later list then <laughs> as well. <laughs> because that happened during Antcon. Uh, yeah, I'm still keeping ants. I, uh, of course, I took. I, I often take care of science colonies as well when he's on holiday, and he actually gifted me a colony that's doing really well right now. I have a brand new, beautiful Campanota Singularis colony, and uh, was really afraid at first because my last colony, I had a little bit of struggle with them, and they actually moved to Camponico ants on YouTube. Because, uh, yeah, he, he loves the species that were not for sale back then. And um, I knew he would take great care of them, so I moved those. And I wasn't actually planning on keeping Singularis again. 
But then I got Singularis as a gift from Stein, so now I have Singularis. So that's great, and they they are doing really well. Uh, what's more, <laughs> I jumped on a certain bandwagon, and I have two Mermesias, oh. which I am kind of struggling with because they are a different story, uh, like compared to the Campanotes that I normally keep. Oh, what's Here that? the Mermex escapes. Let's get some information. Twice. What's oh. up with the, with the Bullands? Well, uh, they are kind of special. Like the, uh, the first girl, I gave them both names. Uh, she's named Peggy, and I uh, got her from Bullant UK. And she uh, she has this leg that's like inside out, a little bit weird. That's why she's called Peggy because she has a little bit of a peg leg. She didn't have broods like for 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 many months that I kept her, and I was like scared that she would be infertile or something. So I was planning on getting her out of the nest that I have them in, have her in, and boom, eggs <laughs> inside oh, nice. that nest because she didn't want to move out. That's nice. And then the other one, and she's called Echo, and she was doing really well and brood and eggs and, and galore and everything. And then every time her larvae is ready to spin their cocoon, she grabs the, uh, the larvae and puts it something somewhere that it cannot spin a cocoon and it dies and it happened twice now and now she's really skittish of her environment she seems unsure she doesn't like her nest anymore she's running around doesn't want to lay eggs so she's not doing very well at the moment sucks that sucks well bull ants they are an interesting story but they're also so unique man they are such unique ants it's just, and they're, they're beautiful just as well yeah, what, what species are you keeping? Oh, uh, let me butcher the names. Uh, <laughs> well, I know two of the list. names. I, I can pronounce two of the species. I have Negriceps and Negrosincta. All right, yeah. Actually, not that much of butchering there. there. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's definitely understandable. So um, you said something more before. You had some even more ants you had received. Whoa. Yeah, because I straight away jumped onto Mermesia, uh, even though I haven't kept a very sp uh, a special species that's actually, or at least I find them rather related to Mermesia, I haven't kept Harpagnathos. Oh, and I get my, my and uh, of course, because I, I take care of Stein's Edge and he has Diacama. And my hands got itchy, so I wanted Diacama and I wanted Harpagnathos. So now I have Harpagnathos and I have Diacama. And I'm trying to figure out how they tick because they are also different than normal. I'm all yeah. I always, I'm used very used to the, the ants that have a food storage and majors and everything that you know you can you can feed them and they fill them up with liquid and they walk around with the food for days. <laughs> But these guys, these guys need regular feeding and everything, so it's kind of different. Yeah, I think it's something we'll definitely hit on a little bit later because that's some things that's definitely happened a lot this year. We've, we've definitely entered the expert market of ant keeping a lot more than last year. The availability of like hard special ants is so much more available now, which is just amazing. Um, so we have a question from Dex. Uh, wait, not Dex. Dex or Tix? Maybe pronounced correctly. Who knows? Um, and yeah, and this is something we're gonna try to do a lot more on the end part. Uh, get a lot of input from the viewers. So if we're gonna ask a question, like we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna have a discussion about this in the future. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna get a lot of viewer thoughts in. So if you're having a viv and all of this, either way, we want to get a lot more viewer interaction here on the end part. But um, Dex, which I'm gonna shorten it, ask Lynn, how many colonies? do you keep now? Ooh, that's a hard question because I also have a bunch of last year's Nigers in the fridge and everything. I think I have around 45 colonies right now. Dang. Lin, Lin, Lin. Is that your all-time high or is that just usual up there? I think, I think, <laughs> I think it might be by high because like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight of those colonies are like really big ones. So uh, it's it's uh. get, it's get, like getting crazy up here, and I I I I, I might have to uh, relocate a few because I might be drowning in here. 
Yeah. How, how long do you use on maintenance on a daily and weekly basis then? Not that much. Most of the ants are really easy to keep, like the Mesur Barbaris. Uh, I just chuck a bunch of seeds in there, and they also love chicken and stuff like that. They're really easy. Uh, some of the ants also just woken up from uh, diapause, so they're really chill right now. Yeah. Uh, normally, I take the founding colonies. I do two times a week um, these days, so it's like. Uh, think one hour two hours for their maintenance and then the bigger colonies yeah they're, they're pretty okay i just any other day i give them sugar and any other day i chuck a bit of protein and then in there and some of them i uh, oh wait i forgot a big colony oops <laughs> i completely <laughs> forgot about them and uh uh, some of them I limit limit a little bit on the protein, like the Aerody Muramex. Uh, they escaped three times in the last year, uh, mostly because of my personal escape, uh, personal errors, and once because they actually they put the sand like between the the Saturn, like underneath, and they cracked one of the pieces. So yeah. they found a little exit, and they chucked it full with sand and everything. So they came out there and we couldn't find the exit where they escaped from because it was on the back of the Saturn uh, and they are put against the, uh, what's that thing called? The radiator at the moment downstairs in the kitchen. And one time, uh, another time, they chewed like this 3D printed uh, connector piece that I have and completely demolished it. So I came downstairs and I was making coffee and everything I do in the morning. And I looked at my at my toes because we don't turn on, on the lights that much downstairs at the morning. <laughs> and there were black spots everywhere. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And I turned on the lights and I went, ants everywhere. So many ants. Oh, I think and I had to go to work. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's the, it's the worst time of escape. That's in the middle of the night when you just wake up to a nightmare. It's definitely... Uh, one of the reasons why I'm not keeping leaf cutter currently is uh, because damn, that's uh, it's not fun having those problems. So what about the other two? You said two personal mistakes led to escapes. What was the what were they all about? Uh, well, the one was the the three the three D three D printed plug because I didn't check up it check on it regularly. Check the lab. I'm <laughs> doing well, really well with speaking right now. <laughs> I didn't check up in it on yeah. Jesus. G yeah. <laughs> I didn't getting, check getting back on into it. speaking English. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a gibberish right now. I didn't check on it and uh they're really chewy. They like to chew. And because I limited the protein, they were going nuts on the chewing everywhere. Uh normally I check the plugs to see if uh, if there's no chewing damage and I forgot for a week so they went through. And the second time I wanted to replace that plug, but I had to go to work, of course. So I plugged it with cotton no. and I completely forgot about that. So oh. the next week they were gone again. <laughs> that, that sucks. Well, I mean, you learn something every time they escape, right? <laughs> yeah, and the look, look has it that uh, it, it's winter or it was winter while they escaped. So they didn't go really anywhere because the nests are hot, but yeah. everything else is cool. And the kitchen floor is cold, so they were like really slow and sluggish because cold and ill. So it was uh, easy to capture them again. That's nice. But we are not only, it's not just you and me. We also have Jake from Ants Matters. Hello there, Jake. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, that sounded sober. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh. At home. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm well, connected or... to the audience. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah, I just skipped that part with Lynn because I need to get back into the focus of, uh, well, we skipped that. How, how are you doing, Lynn? But, uh, <laughs> Lynn, how are you doing? Uh, I'm great. I'm uh, uh, excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the message you, you, you said in the end of the last podcast, uh, all that year ago, you said you can't wait for the day I sent the message to the potters back. And uh, yeah, only took 12 months, but here we are, the potters back. Um, but it Jake, totally doesn't feel like. 12 months like either <laughs> no i mean sitting it feels in, like you know, just maybe a couple months ago we were like all recording but yeah, yeah i mean look think about the last time i edited an episode that feels like ages ago but just sitting here and talking that doesn't feel like that long ago but jake let's hear a little recap of what happened in the past 12 months with you so uh, yeah what's what's the headline since last time well during summer everything was going pretty good 
Like all of the ants were thriving, especially my Polyrachis Proxima, the golden girl. Like she was doing great. But then like over winter, oh my God, it's just been death everywhere. And I've even managed to like, I won a contest on like New Year's and more death. But no. like basically every Polyrachis species that I've got is dead. <laughs> and that's like the dives. And I tried again with some more dives and they also like died. There was the Polyrachis Proxima, which she put on like a well good fight. First of all, like all of her workers just slowly like one would go and then like another one a couple of days later and like another one a few days later until it was just her basically and well she seemed to be bouncing back she laid like loads of eggs and she had a few little larvae but every time a larvae would get kind of about halfway grown she'd chuck it out of the tube and like there was something wrong there somewhere they must have caught something maybe but yeah she sadly died as well which i was guided about that because I really liked her. She was my favourite and out of all of them, I think, to be fair, just because she was pure gold and she was doing so well as well. She got my hopes up and as well as the other ones that died, it's like the Nitrata, I think it is, the one with the red bum. I think it's Nitrata or is it, it might be Mitrata. I don't know. Anyone know? <laughs> No, I'm not a, I'm not a poly expert. <laughs> no, I think it's Nitra, but they got like a red bum. And yeah, she never got off the floor, really. And, and then the pogos died. Well. Oh, the oh, pogos. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, they slowly like trickled down until it was just the queen again. And then she went and it was like, no, because they were doing like really well until I think hibernation. Like, I messed them up a bit or something. I've, I did something wrong. Or maybe so it's all in this winter incubate. time. It's all in winter time. Yeah. It's far wrong. Mm. And the yellow crazies, but I think that happened a bit before. No, the crazies <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, they no. just like they just went really weird. They were like, we don't want to be on the heat anymore. We're just gonna go anywhere, but where the heat is and stuff. And it's like, what, what are you doing? And yeah, yeah they just went weird as hell. And then the queen would be like, oh, actually, I'm gonna stay in the warm bit, all on her own and stuff. And one day he came in and the queen was just a fuzzy ball of like mold and it had happened like overnight, like bam. And she must have just got infected and died, like or overwhelmed, I guess. And this fungus had completely taken her. That sucks, man. Do you have yeah. any So everything happened here in wintertime, do you think it's because of something that went wrong with the like you say incubator or what do you think happened? Well, it could be the incubator, something, maybe some chemical or something. But I have been really careful with all of that. And the only other thing, maybe it's humidity, maybe it's too dry in there, but all the tanks are closed. And if they're looking a bit dry, I'll shoot them with my uh, spray bottle. So I don't think it's that. So I think maybe something was poisoning them or maybe parasites. Because the uh, Armata Queen, all of her workers started changing colour and I think it turned out to be a stomach parasite or something like that. I think there's like a weird parasite and it it does something and makes them change colour as well. Yeah. And that's why I blame for those workers dying. And maybe it's spread, but I'm not really too sure how all of that like stomach parasite stuff works. And no. it, even if it could spread. But I guess if a mite could like eat a little bit or something and carry it to another nest or something like that yeah then it's, mm. then it's yeah they, they can be everywhere that sucks man is there is there anything on the line for bouncing back or, or what's what's the plan then well everything that didn't die is like done amazing as well which is the really weird bit it's like why is like half of them have done absolutely brilliant and the other half are dead and it's like what on earth and i also lost the mamesia queen as well which is yeah, like no uh, she was doing like so well it seemed like all of her little uh babies were doing great and her like egg pile was growing and then one day like bam she's a uh, wiped out and it's like no i felt so bad for that too because i'd only like i'd only had her like a month and it was like oh no i'm the worst contest winner ever <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can't do much about it when they die but yeah i guess that leads us to the question from dex how how many colonies are you then keeping now? I think fourteen, but is that like separate colonies or separate 
Right, I know, I've been counting species. I got. I think I got 14 species, but... Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. This is, if you say 17 is such a one by count in a second, I'm, a, I'm gonna lose it. Um, like 18, I think. 18, and then I'm, I'm including like two Tetramoran and by Karen Atom. One of them is like one's in the natural setup, they've got their big like natural setup now, and I guess that's happened in the last uh, 12 months. And so they're living in like a big natural setup, most of them, and then. On the side, I've got a little kind of breeder colony, which is for the shop. <laughs> yeah. Where I just I mean, last, keep last them I saw, over. Last I saw the bike, Karen Atoms, probably at Ancon, you had... You were gone, you, as far as I believe, it's Gen, Gen 3 and Gen 2, so is that there? That's gone, right? Or is that still a thing? Yeah, yeah, they kind of outgrew that. <laughs> yeah. And then you put them in that tank with the white tank block. Yeah, they did really well in that, but they not. I won't say they did too well, but my God, they they started really filling that out. And <laughs> I thought to myself, like, where can I go from here? And it was like, basically, you're gonna have to go in like a natural setup. But God, oh, getting the ants out of it, it was like I'd fill up like a cup <laughs> of ants, easy peasy, like just, and it'd just be full of ants completely to the top, and it'd be like, yep. And there's just like so many hundreds of thousands like crammed into that tank Damn. i'm lucky they didn't escape <laughs> yeah I mean, we want we need a video on them jake i want to see how they're doing at this point i haven't seen them in ages it seems yeah they've like moved tanks too now like they were in the, the gypsum tank now they're in the uh Carabera's old tank but that's been redone but they are on a diet, so I'm kind of trimming them down a bit now, I think. In the natural, because I was like, why do I want them so big still? And I thought, now I can like fine tune them now to any size that I want. Because, well, because they're not like anything to do with the shop. It's like, they're my colony now, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I really like my colony. They're, they're, they're a nice colony. I just hate cleaning them. They're such an inconvenience to clean because they're just it's so in the food. But yeah. They're not fussy at all. They're like, oh yeah, look, this is outside the nest. We're just gonna dump whatever we want anywhere. And it's like, no, put it in a pile like other ants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Alright. Well, I'll, I'll just end off with a little bit about me then. Um so around around this time last year, I was talking with uh with a guy called Anscapes, called also known as Fran, about building like a big natural setup. Um, yep, he traveled to Denmark. You probably know the story. I have a big tank with colonies inside now. Um, so in there, I keep. I think I have five. Well, I have four species that I know is alive at the moment, and technically there's five in there. Well, technically I think there's six in there, but I have five, five potentially alive, and four that is definitely alive. I think the trap jaws may have gone under. They had they had a handicapped queen. She only had three and a half legs remaining or something when she got in there. And uh, yeah, I, I put them in and I never see them again. So yeah, other than that, there's a manicure with beta in there. There's a Campanota Sneak of Arensis, which was quite a controversial decision. <laughs> I can see that from the social media response, uh, Lynn um, and others. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's Sneak of Arensis in there. There's manicure beta. It's not really a European or it was meant to be like a Thailand-ish theme, but yeah, not really anymore. So yeah, there's also uh, the Trap Jaws, the Manticola, no, Octanta Macus Manticola, I think they're called. And uh, yeah, Campanola Singularis and Habergnasus Venator, so we're living in there. And despite, despite the Nikos being a potential dominator in there, they're all still coexisting very fine. And the main problem is the beetles are eating all the jelly. So yeah, that's not a big thing. Uh, other than that, I mean, I've, I've, of course, a little bit of... Well, of course, actually, no, now that I think about it, a lot has happened with my colonies because my big Mesobarbrus colony is gone and my leaf cutters are gone. And I've really cut down on a lot of colonies. And then I've also got some new colonies. So, yeah, I, I just got... Except that I just got seven colonies today and yesterday combined. Before, I only had five outside the VIF and four inside the VIF. But now I just got seven more today. So, well, I guess... Well, what's, what's that? That's... Well, that is like 
16 colonies I'm keeping now, so uh, yeah. Well, most of them are just single queens, so... Yeah, and I'm really going all in on trying this Viv thing, which is... It's, it's, it's gonna be an episode we're gonna talk about in two weeks' time or something. Uh, so if you have any ideas or thoughts about Viv's, please send them to the end for Instagram. I'll mention that a little bit later, but... Yeah, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm moving house soon, so that's that's why I, I've, I've cut down on mans. Uh, got... I've become a single man again, meaning uh, I'm, I'm gonna move out of this apartment. And the once lovely looking ant room is now looking very weird and will soon be torn completely down. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit of a Hollifer update. Other than that, well, I'm posting a lot on my ex extra channel on YouTube. So hopefully you can see anything or any questions you may have. You can see that right there. Um, but yeah, that's been a little update about the three hosts who are here today, me, Lynn and Jake. Uh, CT is still among one of the hosts. We'll just have to see how the time zones will make him available to join, but he is still on the team. But yeah, I've been waiting such a long time to actually say this, because last year, I think I saw that it was... It's right now as we're recording, it's the 13th of March, and I believe I got this message on the 28th of March last year. Uh, it was a guy named Sane who reached out to the ant pod on Instagram and sent a lovely video. And I've been waiting. I said to him, I'm gonna, is it alright that I feature this in the next podcast? And he said yes. And I knew at that point the podcast had just been cancelled. <laughs> it had just been shut down. So either way, I saved the video. And uh, a year ago, Sane said this. Let's hope he's still a listener. Uh, here's the video for all of you. Hello, Ant Pod. Uh, my name is Zane Durant. I'm from Ogden, Utah. Big fan, Casey. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm a huge fan of your guys' show. Uh, recently came across it. I've been a follower of Ants Holifer for about three or four months. Um, went through, have watched all of your content since, uh, even went back to some of your original uh, first beginning um, ant colonies. And I originally discovered Ant Holifer through um, I recently purchased a Messer Barbarous colony and have just been trying to, before I purchased it, have been doing a lot of research on how best to keep them and uh, stumbled across a lot of your content and have really enjoyed it. Yes, so uh, yeah, did you guys see the video? Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. I wonder how Messer Barbarous are getting on. Yeah. You should do an update. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Update video. Zane, if you're still out there, we, we want the update, Zane. Are you still a listener? <laughs> uh, well, either way, that's that was a little video from Zane, and uh, I thought it was very cool. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, feel free to send in any videos, and we'll we'll feature them on the on the podcast here. So yeah. Either way, guys, that's been a little bit about us. So I think we need to look a little bit into what actually happened last year at Ancon, and apparently I've already missed something at Ancon 2023, uh, <laughs> because that's that's where we all met Lin for the first time, or at least we tried to meet, meet Lin. Um, for those who didn't <laughs> know, we all, I think, I, what, okay, Lin, what day did you actually arrive? I arrived on, I think it was Thursday. No. Thursday or Wednesday, yeah. Damn. Yeah, and because... the very first day, Actually, I dragged my sister back outside and we went to Ant Antics to see where it was located. And I saw you and Sam working on something in the, what's it called? The glass, uh, the glass window uh, dingy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for those Stop who didn't know, Lynn, she, uh, we all, we all like, all of us were meeting at Ant, at, at Ant Antics and all of this, the, the pub and all of it, having a joy of our life, having a fun time. And Lynn was just like, yeah, we were all waiting to see where Lynn was because, well, it's Lynn. We all know Lynn. We want to meet Lynn. And we just got a message. Yeah, she's in town. But where is she? Where is Lynn? And uh, yeah, I mean, I believe that all Thursday long, they, yeah, we never saw you. Apparently you saw us, but we, yeah. <laughs> Either way. So uh, yeah, something that happened last year was Ancon 2023. I think it was a, a great success. At least it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, what did you guys think? What did you think, Lynn? This was, of course, your first Ancon. What did you think of it all? Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Because, like like it says, welcome home. Well, it was really welcoming home. It was, it was like getting home. It was so weird because I've never been there. But it felt like I've been there before. And the people, I've never seen most of you. But 
I knew you and I knew most of you and everything and it all felt so natural and normal. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't say anything, but I agree. I remember so clearly the first time I was at Ancon. Like that Sunday when we, were, when we were leaving again, it was just like, it was so weird because you just felt so connected to everyone in the place and so weird to finally be together, especially here in Denmark where there's zero Anki was pretty much who are at least online and talking. Um, it was so weird to just be with all of your online friends for the first time or actually do that. Uh, but yeah, what's this about a spider? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell a story or shall I, I tell the story? Um, depends which bit. Are you, what, do you want to do the main start? bit and I can do the, uh, the hotel bit? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole story here I can hear. Yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> Ant ramblings and antimatters were actually walking around asking people if they wanted a, a tarantula. <laughs> and it was actually on the, la the very last day when we were sitting in the Weatherspoon. It's a, a, a bar, cafe kind of thingy. And uh, ramblings approached my sister and me and out of nowhere after talking was like, you want a tarantula? <laughs> we got a tarantula. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> A tarantula, and uh, turns out Percy was looking for a new home. And I am a sucker for creatures with sad stories <laughs> that look for houses and yeah. everything. So I was like, okay then, I'm. Uh, I guess I'm getting a tarantula, and I know very for for a fact that my boyfriend will probably murder me, <laughs> but I'm getting a tarantula. Was it a success then? Well, I somehow managed to drag the poor creature home in my bag and we went to Belgium and a cat laid on the back and he almost got out because the lid was uh, moved a little oh. bit, but he was just chilling inside of the in, inside of the container still. And uh, yeah, I'm still alive and now there's more than one tarantula in my home, so I guess I'm uh, doing something uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I, I remember, yeah. Jake, was, was it last year you brought your crow? Was that last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Ricky was there as well. Mm, oh. Old Ricky boy. Yeah, in oh, the hotel that's... as well. Um, Percy, the little tarantula, he, he was causing well, not chaos, but oh, the um, there was like a cleaning lady or something on one yeah. of the days in the room, and I think she'd gone into the room, and Percy is just there. He was like sitting in the middle of the room in his little like beer <laughs> tub, just like sitting there, and uh, yeah, I think scared the uh, cleaning lady a little bit. Oh, damn. <laughs> other, other than that, how was your experience of, uh, of the Ancon last year, Jake? Oh, I love it. Like, it is, like you said, it, it all feels so, like, natural. It's like you belong there kind of thing. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's definitely like, welcome home. And I can't wait now. It's like not even that long until this year's Ancon. Yeah, I was about to say, are you both coming this year or? For sure. Yeah. Uh, Good, good, good. Oh, I was scared for a second. I'm going to buy my ticket, a uh, train ticket later, I think. Yeah, and apparently, apparently, unofficially, like the first year at Ancon, it's a Saturday thing, but the first year on the Sunday, people came in the morning and picked up their colonies and stuff like that. The last year on the Sunday, it was almost like a thing, like all people almost came back there, and picked up the stuff and were there for a few hours. And then this year, Ancon 2024, it's apparently just a two-day thing now. So we have the Saturday, and the Sunday is officially just kind of part of the whole event. I, don't, I, I, I can't remember what it's actually about. Do you remember the specifics on the Sunday? Or is it just like a meet and thing? Meet and greet again? I think it is one of them. Yeah, just turn up if you want to like buy a few bits that you didn't get the day before. And Yeah. Yeah, it seems that yeah, way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the store's mm. open and they sell a little bit more. That's right. So, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to Ancon. This year's a little bit different with tickets because it's it's everyone has the same ticket, whereas the other years it's been like price ranges. So yeah, it will be interesting to see what's different and uh, what will happen in Ancon 25 and all of this. Yeah, I um, don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I think oh. I'm running the uh, the escape off this year as well. So, yeah, like, that's fine. <laughs> I have no, I have no, I don't know, I don't know what to do with it yet, but <laughs> I'm thinking about it. If anyone in the audience has any ideas of like scape off ideas for a scape off competition where you just make little tanks, like let me know. Yeah, that's right. Sadly, 
Ryan, who's, who's been the escape of man for the past two years, he's, uh, he's at a wedding this year. So badly timed, Ryan. I mean, how can you prioritize yeah. a wedding? How can you even prioritize a wedding over Ancon? I mean, that's... Yeah, that's just <laughs> not right. Um, but yeah, looking over what's happened the past 12 months, we've also had some new nests come out. And notably, I've written down two things. We have the Wakushi Modular Range, a.k.a. Gen 4, and uh, Ant Farm Supply starting off. I hadn't, I had, I had seen Ant Farm Supply a little bit before, but this year I feel like Ant Farm Supply has really become a big thing. Um, so first of all, if we look at the Wakushi Modular Range, um, Gen 4, it's of course Wakushi have gone to black instead of the white. And it's pretty much just a, a modular range where your small modules connect with screws and it's acrylic floors on the dry modules and it is um, gypsum inserts on the humid modules. Potentially there's also some cork and some wood and but I'm not completely up to date of, of what their updates are. But have you tried the Gen 4, Jake? Um, I did. Oh, oh, actually, is it a baby gen is it a baby gen 4 it's cool yeah yes, i've tried yes. one of them so oh yeah i've used one of those with the mamesia and for her it was doing a great job and i think yeah she didn't die because of the bad nest i don't think because the larvae and everything were doing well good yeah <laughs> and so you, have, yeah, you haven't nice. tried any of the others no not yet i've got like i've still got so much gen 3 and <laughs> and some gen 2 from like gen 2 and 3 city that i've got enough for a few years and then Saturn, so I, I'm like like Sadie over at uh, like Ants England. Like I, I just love a Saturn. Like, they're the best nests ever. Yeah, but, mm. I mean they're a fail-safe nest, pretty much. Well, except when they apparently put sand and bite out and escape. <laughs> 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 but other than that, they are very, very, very nice and safe option. But I guess it makes sense. You're also making your own nest, so of course you're not as much out in the nest market when you're also designing yourself. What about you, Lynn? Have what's what's your experience with Gen Four? Yeah, well, of course, the Master Cephalodes they moved into a Gen Four, which I attached to one of those uh, Gen Four feeding modules, which they pretty much used as a seed storage, and this uh, small tiny nest that was actually from Antcon, or uh, the Outworld. I mean, the I think it's a Generation Three Outworld, so that went really well. Yeah. Uh, until it didn't, of course, but that's <laughs> nothing uh, has nothing to do with the nest because the nest was perfect. It was great. It was easy to heat. I forgot to buy lids. I put a sock on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that works as well. And Echo has also spent some time in uh, in the Gen 3 nest. She also did really well into that nest until she started to use one of the corners as a trash storage because, of course, she was alone and it's a big nest for a single queen. Yeah. And right now I'm actually moving Harpagnatos in uh, one of them, and the other one contains my uh, Campanotus mutilarius something. And they have a bunch of eggs, so they are also doing pretty okay in there. I just I just feel like what Christy launched, I mean, I, d I don't know much about Gen 1 uh, as before my time. Well, it's not, but before I realized what Christy was a thing. Uh, Gen 2, he kind of the the G gypsum was born as far as i remember I, I it may have been in gen 1 at least but gen 3 the gypsum was small but it worked well but here in gen 4 the headline is just massive gypsum all the way and from my experience they just hold humidity so damn well like i know it's it's hard to work with and i think that's why it's grown over the time from small modules or small in small things to now almost the entire nest just made of one big gypsum um, but yeah, I mean, by far, uh, compared to any other nest, the, the gypsum. I mean, it's of course, it's the gypsum and Wakushi modules that's working well, but generally just, I want to see more gypsum nest out there. I feel like there's so many of these 3D printed, uh, new and upcoming 3D printed stores who just make sponge nests and feel it at this point. I mean, for me at least, I feel like sponge nests are a little bit of a covid nest i mean i mean that's that's when the, yeah. the sponge nest kind of topped in me that's back when covid was a big thing <laughs> i don't know what what do you think of that guys well you definitely can't beat the gypsum i don't think like the only reason like gen 2 c for the tetramorium when i had like loads of them like it worked the the or well, i chose gen 2 because 
you can get like about three quarters of a gypsum module in one of them and it was basically that and it was like had loads of those basically but the the ants every species i've found has always loved like gypsum and i don't know if it's if it's easy to like drink off or something like that as well but they do well in it whereas sponge nah they're like oh we're it's like wet here today and then the next day it'll dry out and they'll move as well and i, I imagine yeah. it like stresses them moving house every day like multiple times very inconsistent from my experience with sponges yeah i, I would love to see more nest with uh with uh gypsons another important else? thing about a gypsum floors or I, uh, we, uh, itong, itong, itong nests compared to acrylic nests or complete uh, 3D printed nests is that ants will always like have their own colony scent and have a little bit of formic acid everywhere and stuff like that or a dirty corner or waste and itong and gypsum will actually uh, absorb that stuff while 3D print and stuff will not, so it will get yucky and gross and you always have this really nasty corner. While no. in 3D, or, or I mean in uh, gypsum or in um, whitong, it's much better uh, for the ants as well in, uh, because of that. I'd never thought about that, but that's right. It, it sucks it up. You don't have those kind of wet spots because, yeah, of course, they get a little bit sucked up in the module themselves. That's right. Well, um... The next point is the ant farm supplies. First of all, I don't know, have you guys uh, tested ant farm? Have you ever used ant farm supplies, Jake? No, although by looking at by like looking at it, I guess it's like got gypsum by the looks of it in the floor, maybe. Is it? I don't know. Actually, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a cheater uh, because when I first saw it, I thought it was like full gypsum. Uh, but it is actually a 3D printed nest lined with thin layer of gypsum. Um, which was oh, yeah. in, in version, got, yeah. 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 So in version one, it was a quite thin layer, but the ants were biting and pulling on it. So on the version two nest, which are now for sale, uh, the gypsum layer is a lot thicker, but it's still a 3D printed shell with 3D printed chambers covered with a layer of gypsum. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I think that does it. it I don't, I've got one of the ant antics little little tiny cottage nests and it has like that painted on gypsum and to begin with I thought or oh, I don't know if how well it's going to retain humidity but it has been working quite well and I have to water it every week but it's not too bad like <laughs> although the scans I never have to water them so it feels <laughs> like a big deal watering it once a week but it could be way worse <laughs> but it seems to work like the thin gypsum like as well yeah, that's that's some nest I still haven't really seen. I, I want I want to test them out at some point, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll pick some up at Ancon. Uh, but yeah, you, you haven't. Yeah, overall, what do you think of the end farm supplies? Just from an outside perspective, without having tried them, Jake. It looks alright. It looks like you could raise some like good stuff in it. Yeah. A little bit same, same. Some of it is stuff that's already there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fire. Well, more firing less, firing away more right there. <laughs> ah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I, to be honest, it's I, I think it's really sad what it's done with the Outworlds because it's a carbon, a carbon copy of the Wakushi Outworlds, like a one-to-one -one copy with size measurements of the, of the small, I don't know what they call the small things you use to connect the walls and the, it's it's, yeah, uh, the it's, it's a shame. It's a shame because it really ruins like these a little bit unique sand nests from from the outworlds. But uh, yeah, Lynn, what do you think of uh, Ant Farm Supply? And I think the nests look really well. I have I don't have any of them yet, but I was looking into it. But it's a really a little bit out of my price range uh, when you include like the shipping to the Netherlands. So I don't think I'm getting any of those for a while. But they do look really nice, the nests. So from the, the girl that's following every ant keeper in the world, what what do you feel people's experience are from an outside perspective? I think uh, they are very positive, mostly. Like I've seen a lot of people uh, founding or starting out with this, with the, I think it's the version 2S. And uh, the colonies look seem to be doing really well in inside of these nests. 
It's really natural for them. It has a bit of uh, yeah, tar, tar Heel Ant vibes with uh, the plaster and the sand. And that makes it really natural for the ants as well. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very positive. Uh, very positive from the, the, the general public. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say it's a little bit of a Tahir Lands and the poor Morats mixed together in Europe for the first time. And to be honest, I mean, just, just that it's in Europe is amazing. But like you say, it's still a UK based store. So we do have, why are all the end stores in the UK? Well, most of them are, at least. Yeah, we the, need to move there. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got the import fees in all of this. It's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I've, I have the extra large nest and. I have a few negative things to say about the version 1 because they bit down to the gypsum and it's really easy to flood and stuff like that. But that's all been resolved in the version 2. So by just making the gypsum floor a lot thicker or I don't know if it's gypsum or if it's plus or whatever it is, um, it's it's very nice. Now the ants did at first, I overhydrated, <clears throat> believe it or not, but I overhydrated it. Um, very uncomfortable all over here. <laughs> no. I got some new I got some new nest today from Wakushi and he was like, don't put much water in them. And he, he said that to me after I'd already <laughs> filled one of them twice. And damn, damn too slow. Uh, so I may have overhydrated one of them. Either way, um, yeah, the ant farm, I, I, I can't lie, I fell in love. I think the first time I saw them was ants who did a live stream at the ants on a rock show. To, uh, before Ancon last year, so it was a long time ago, and I saw those nests and I'm like, those look like nice nests. And slowly but surely, the people start it started popping up more and more, and I realized, oh, it's a store. Let me follow the store. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a shame what's happened with the Outworld, but the nest, the nest, they look really nice. Um, and my experience with the version two nest, other than when I had to move four nests connected, it's of course all based on magnets, meaning it's way easier to move around than the Wakushi modular range because that's all fixed in place with screws but when you then move the wakushiness when you move the wakushiness there's nothing coming loose but when i when i move the and from supply all four of the nest for a second unhooked and i panicked and everything came together and i was just i was so scared the queen would have been right, right in the middle of those connections because i forgot they were magnetic and they all i took my hand from beneath and just lifted up and they all four broke apart, so Ooh. yeah, that was not fun. Luckily, the queen was alive, and I, to be honest, I don't know if there was casualties. I probably was some casualties, but I have the my Nova Mesa Cockerelli living in that, and um, yeah, it seems like a nice nest. I have a little bit of a hard time finding out if the humidity inside is stable or not, um, but I mean, I, I, I fill it up once a week, and the ants seem to be fairly happy, and uh, the nice thing is it's, it's um, I wouldn't say a small store, but it's a small it's a store at that size where if people have a lot of complaints they're fixed and um, before the next version uh, so I, I had some issues with my heat cable not fitting under the gen 1 um together with a few other minor things and they were all resulted in the uh, version 2 so yeah i made an honest gen 1 uh, version 1 unboxing and it was a little bit harsh but yeah version 2 was a lot nicer um yeah anything yeah. else you want to add guys I yeah. think it's quite nice that they actually did take your feedback and do something about it because, yeah, not all shops do that. They were like, take your feedback and completely ignore it. But, yeah. No, I'm not going to lie. I, when I did that video, I was so upset. Like, I had sand everywhere. The sand had come all. I was so upset when I did that video, right? And I sent the video to the guy and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm not very happy. And he, he got very scared because he was like, oh no, I mean, uh, can I see it? And I showed him the video and he was like, ah, oh, okay. Constructive criticism with a little bit of an angry Holifer mouth, but he took it as constructive criticism and it was resulted in the next version. So he, he, he took all of my quite honest feedback like a champ. So that's, that's what we want to see. Um, yeah, so I mean, other than... We have a little bit of the ant antics nests coming out. Um, I do. I don't think aesthetic ants will have launched some new colors with the white song range. Um, but other than that, I don't feel like there's any like big headline stores out there releasing new products. Do you uh, do you think anything out there? I haven't spotted anything for a little bit. No, it's been a bit quiet. Maybe. It has been quiet. It's also hibernation time, so perhaps that's. 
hitting a little bit. Uh, yeah, what uh, is what Kushi is long, or it's, he's testing his new all in one baby gen one or baby gen four setup. So it's like a baby gen four nest connected with a Venus Outworlds for an all in one mini setup for bull ants and stuff like that. So and the uh, Havik Nestus Venetus and small yet specific species. And I think that leads that leads into my final two bullet points for today, uh, which is bull ants seems to be everywhere. And uh, all over the ant keeping, we have a lot more better stock. Um, and I definitely feel like it's a, a, apparently, I believe this, uh, it's more than a year ago since I got my first bull ant queen, which that seems insane, Bessie. She's, it was more than a year ago. Um, but yes, yeah, since the, since like last year, I just feel like bull ants have become a very big thing. I know bull ant UK uh, is, is becoming a big importer. Same with ants HQ is also starting to import a lot of these bull ants. And the same with uh, Ant and Co over in France. So it seems that bull ants are becoming a lot more common, which is amazing. Because I remembered like two years ago when I talked with Ant Antics, and we were talking bull ants, and he, I think he, he had ordered some, and they all showed up dead, and it was just, it was just not worth the hassle of or the hassle of importing such ins expensive and sensitive species. But yeah, they've become a lot more common. What do you guys uh, think of uh, the overall stock this year? It's definitely gotten better. Or like, well, not better because all the ants are pretty cool, but they're uh, gotten, yeah, definitely more exotic. Because, yeah, there's so many species now where it's like, wow, well, that never used to turn up. And it has just been getting richer and richer, I guess, with the amount of species that are available every year for for ages. Hopefully, it continues. <laughs> I feel like there's some good competition because suddenly you start to see some of the stores are lagging a little bit behind they just have the basic species the cool thing is that there's now basic species that are not just the native species like before the native were kind of the basic and then like the exotics were a little bit of the whoa you got exotics but the exotics even the exotics like Camponotus nicobarensis like the the second a store opens they pretty much sell nikos from day one and and carabara diversa is becoming a very commonly sold queen as well or colony type as well so it's, it's, I mean, I, it can hurt the hobby, I believe. Um, what are your thoughts, Lynn? Yeah, we now have uh, Camponotus nicobarensis uh, popping up in every store for about 10 euros. So that's like nothing compared to what it used to be. Yeah, it, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's different for sure. I just hope that people keep respecting the ants as them being living creatures and not easy to get uh, pets uh, or not even pets. Treat them as less, less than pets because they are not fuzzy and entertaining or can not be as entertaining as cats and dogs. Keep reminding everyone, they are living creatures. <laughs> yeah, and especially with these bull ants and these bigger species, they, they have... The time of them, I mean, you you don't have colonies of bull ants. You have bull ant and workers if you're doing well. I mean, that's a colony technically, but it's not like a Nico where you have, oh, I only have 30 workers. Oh, I only have 100. Oh, I only have 500 workers. Like these, these, the same with Harpignathus venetus. I mean, that's, that's a colony that was, it wasn't hard to get last year, but like three years ago, they were just not. I remember ant and the ants and the, Ants and the Colonialists, is that, is that the name? The Colonial... Yeah. Uh, JP, JP. <laughs> I remember when he got his Venator and uh, Ants Britannia when he got his Venator like five, four years ago or three years ago and there was just such hardcore ants and they were, oh my god, oh he designed this natural chamber and oh my god, what will happen? Oh, and now it's also just like a species that's quite commonly sold and, and the good thing is the more people keep them, the easier it is to come with care guides because... Back then, we didn't really know how to keep them, and now, I mean, I've raised a colony fairly successful, and I'm officially giving it my second try now. Um, so, yeah, I feel it's it's mm. nice, and but still, these colonies are very different. You don't expect them to grow fast, but instead, you can see such different behavior compared to like a Campanotus. Like you said, Lynn, instead of seeing ants with fat bumps all over the place, you suddenly see ants dragging food around, feeding it directly to the larvae, and all of these cool things. So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, uh, especially like other, other leaf cutters are starting to be imported to Europe and yeah, bullet ants. I mean, I, I got a, I got a bullet ant yesterday, a Parapanera clavata. And I think last year there was crazy expensive and already this year the prices are falling 
quickly down. So that's just amazing. But uh, yeah, any final words? Um, well, I've, I mean, I've put a little little bullet point here, a little final one, and Lynn, Lynn's little uh, Lynn wanted me to include. It, so Lynn, here it is. Uh, well, she, you suggested it, but Wakushi is officially testing the leaf cutter version part two. And I tell you not, it's been it's been a month since I lost my Ada, or since I gave my Ada to a zoo. And what I've been waiting for for two years is apparently now becoming a thing. The Wakushi leaf cutters are in testing the new versions. They're square, they're black, they look stunning. It's uh, it's, it's not official any of all of this, but they look very nice. Uh, looking forward to hearing and following the testing. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some square parts soon and. Uh, it will it will smash the price, I believe. The price will be lower because now both shipping is easier because you can assemble it on site instead of pre-assemble circle, and also because it's just a yeah, it's an easier manageable form factor for Wakushi. So I can't say anything about the price for sure, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what will happen with them. But yeah, I feel like we've reached towards the end of this episode. I mean, it's been it's been a little good forty five minutes to an hour, I think. And uh, Jake. What are your final thoughts um, about the year we've had? Well, it was all right half of the year and the other half sucked. So it's pretty even. Like, <laughs> I'm just hoping that this uh, like spring may kind of start chirping up again and powering on. And maybe this time next year, I'll be in a better situation. Because um, who was it? oh it's Sadie like yeah Anne Singland she did a recent video of like updating on, on all their colonies yeah. and just watching it and I'd totally forgotten that like it was even possible to have a nice winter but yeah I'm hoping that next year maybe I have a nice winter but yeah I mean I I can't lie sometimes when you just when you have a lot of bad luck like when you have when you're busy and you forget to look at your hands and suddenly you get someone makes a video or something and you get pulled back into it. You suddenly have a little bit of a refall in love. It's, it's definitely been a strange winter for me as well. Yeah. Um, but I think if you say it's been an up and down year, half bad, half good. How how what do you, what do you think will happen this year? What are your expectations for two thousand and twenty four? It should go a lot better in the ant keeping department because I've gone back to basics. <laughs> so yeah, I've got my mesoparvus and stuff <laughs> like that, and I'm feeling like. I'm confident I can raise at least one of my two Mesobarbarous queens. Touch wood. And that sh I think that should keep me happy because I did start missing like Mesobarbarous. Not having them, it's like, yeah, you start missing them after a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There's something with the basic, no, I'm, I'm saying basic species, but the good old fashioned species that you, when you have the crazy species, it's, it's nice to just have something that just works. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, a little bit nostalgic as well. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Lynn? Uh, what's your final thoughts of the year we've had? Yeah, much like what uh, Jake said, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And it went really all over the place. And then the hibernation hit and uh, or diapause and diapause depression sets in and everything yeah. happening around and talking about Mesro Barbaris, I have a colony with three queens. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. I've, I've never seen that before. Forgot. Yeah. That's right. I saw that on Instagram the, or on TikTok. What, what's that all about? Uh, yeah, well, like a year or two years ago, people were like, shops were like, oh, you know, we have like too many Mesro Barbaris. Let's give them away for free when you spend 20 euros or something. So I ended up with three more queens, actually four, because I actually raised two separate colonies and I have two giant colonies. And I was like, it's not going well. I have too many Messer Barbaris. And these queens, I'm not sure what's up with them. They weren't doing very well. They were probably leftover from the, rear, the previous year or they were not put cold uh, very well enough or something. They were They didn't want to progress very well. And I had this Venus lying around and I just chucked them all in the Venus, <laughs> put some seeds in there, put some brood for my big colony in there. And I forgot, like, forgot about them for a long time. <laughs> and they were just uh, going on in there and actually developing in their brood happening, everything happening. And I was uh, cleaning the shelf and oh, here they are, <laughs> exploding. <laughs> Moving out, they needed to move out really quickly because, uh, yeah, giant colony right away. All the three queens are doing very well, still alive. 
and the colony looks beautiful. That's such a interesting. I mean, they are normally not polymorphic, right? Oh, not polymorphic. What's it called? Polygamous. Polygamous. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Poly- poly- yeah polygamous. Yeah. Poly- yeah. 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 All of them. They're normally not that, right? Well, they are, or at least I've heard they do playo. So queens founding together and then uh, either fighting or getting killed. Yeah. But okay. I've also heard from Ant Netherlands. Ant Netherlands 20, I think he's called right now. He <laughs> might be 21 real soon. We know. Uh, we, we, we find out, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is what they call uh, facultive. Facultive? I cannot pronounce it correctly. Polygin. And it's pretty rare, but there are some more people around with uh, a few more queens than just one. Oh, wow. So I've never, never seen that until you're calling me. And, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been in this hobby so long that when I started talking with Anne's Netherlands, he was called Anne's Netherlands 16. Yeah. Ah, Time flies. Impressive. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> yeah, I bet you out there who's... Uh, I mean, it's maybe it may even be 15, but I remember from 16 at least. Um, but yeah, that's been this ev- this that's been the return of the end part. Uh, we are officially back, and hopefully, if everything goes well, we will be back to weekly uploads. So, yeah, if there's a topic you would like to hear about, we have people like Danny who sent in a message that he would really like to hear what you do when you have your hands full of ants, when you have two big colonies, you can't feed them. What do you do? So. Due to Danny's wish, well, that will be next week's episode. So, next week we'll be talking about that. Um, but we've also got a lot of questions from different people. So, we'll in the future also do a big Q&A episode where we just answer a lot of different small messages or small questions. So, look forward to that. Uh, I made a little video on my extra channel saying, come with some questions. So, we got some good questions. Um, but because I want to make the end part a little bit more viewer activated, some more viewer inputs, like we heard um, I, I, I Sane, yes, like we heard Sane's message earlier. Uh, if you have, if you would like to say some words, please send them over, and we'll see if we can put them in the podcast. But also, in two weeks' time, we will be discussing uh, keeping ants in vivs slash incubators slash a heated box, whatever you call it. And of course, Jake, you've had some interesting experience with it this year. Uh, I am trying to try them out and see what I think. Uh, Lynn, I guess Lynn, you, your room is just an incubator at the moment, right? <laughs> no, my room is actually, I think, 15 degrees. But oh, I do have an incubator. How uh, wrong I was. I bought one new, like for the first time. And I'm very happy with, uh, yeah, next, next time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's going to be an episode we'll do in two weeks time. And because it's an interesting topic, if you have any thoughts on it, please send it over to the Antpod Instagram and uh, you may be featured. But with that being said, I want to say thank you for listening in here on the Antpod. The Antpod will hopefully be back releasing new episodes every Wednesday. And with that, you will hear more from us at the Antpod next week. <laughs>